These are some of the things that I wish I would have been told as a brand new barber in this industry. So my name is Andre Morales, AKA Dre Clipper Hands, and I've been a barber for about nine years, going on 10. Um, and in my time as a barber, I've made a lot of mistakes and I've also done a lot of good things, you know what I'm saying? And I had to learn a lot of my stuff through the process of elimination, right? Making a bad decision, being like, no, I'm not gonna do that again making a good decision and be like, man, I'm gonna keep doing that more. So my goal with this video here today is to give you guys some advice and things that I wish I would have known as a new barber um, and hopefully it helps you. So this one might shock you, all right? I wanna start it off hot, is your haircuts don't matter that much, right? Obviously your haircuts have to be decent to a certain extent. They have to look good, they have to be passable. The common person has to look in the mirror and feel good about it but your haircuts don't matter as much as you think they do. I know when I first started cutting hair, I was trying to be the best barber in the entire world, which isn't a bad go. But I would stress myself out to the point if the haircut wasn't as blurry as I wanted it to be, the lineup wasn't as sharp as I wanted it to be, um, you know, I would be hard on myself and it would affect my haircuts from that point on the rest of the day. And it would also take my focus off what's important right? Most clients, right, are not going to notice the things that you notice about a haircut. They're not going to notice the slight line behind their ear, right? They're not going to notice that the lineup isn't as sharp as you wanted it to be. As a barber, you have a certain eye and a perspective that most clients, unless they come um, from a background of cutting hair, aren't going to notice. Now, this doesn't mean just butcher them because they're naive and don't know what a good haircut is, but I say that all to say um, don't be so hard on yourself, right? And don't be so focused on the haircut to the point where you think that's all that matters. But I only realized it the longer I did this, right? The longer I was a barber, I started to realize like, man, I really didn't like this haircut, right? But listen, here, here's the thing, here's the thing, all right? Because if someone comes to you at the beginning of your barber career, that means that the haircut you gave them from, from five years ago when they first started coming to you they would be okay with that now, right? Put that into perspective. The haircut that you gave them when they first started coming to you, they liked and they continued to come back. So worst case scenario, right? Five years later, if that haircut looks like that, they're okay with it. And I know when I heard that, I forgot where I heard it. It just took like a, a sense, of, it gave me a sense of relief because I was like, man, if they liked my haircut at the beginning, really anything I do now, if my pursuit is to get better, it's gonna be better than that, you know? So don't stress yourself out, especially as the artist. I know you want the perfect haircut, but I do think it's secondary to what really matters, and that's how you run your business. Right, I know for me, as a young barber, um, I didn't know about the business side of barbering. I thought you would do good haircuts, make a lot of money, and be completely booked, right? But being perfect at haircuts does not make you booked. I've seen Tons of great barbers that do amazing, perfect haircuts that are better than me, and I can get in with them tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So your haircuts don't matter as much as you think they do. But learning how to run your business and structuring how you do your taxes and all of those things matter so much more. And that goes into my second point. When I first started, I took on the mentality because I was very young. I was 18, and I always heard, it's not all about the money, which it's not right? But it is, you know, because as a barber, we love what we do, right? We want to be the best at it. We do it because we love it. But just like any job, there's days you get tired and there's days you don't want to do it, right? But also as a barber, this funds your life. This is essentially your job. You cut hair in exchange for money, right? But I knew when I adopted the mentality that it's not all about money, I held myself back because, um, I was taking so long on haircuts that I wasn't making the money that I needed to take. And really, when you take too long on a client's hair, a lot of clients don't like it. You know what I'm saying? They don't like it. They have places to be. They have a life as well. They don't want to sit in your chair for an hour and a half. No kidding. I was average taking an hour and a half on a haircut when I first started. And it really hindered me because that goes for me being able to do two haircuts in an hour and a half or two three haircuts an hour and a half to doing one, right, for 
and then you work a eight to eight to five shift, a nine to five shift, and you're doing a haircut every hour and a half, you're not making that good of money. You know what I'm saying? So yes, it's not all about the money, but it is, right? Treat it like a job. Understand that your time slots that you give for every single haircut um, is important, right? If you can do a 30 minute haircut that is clean, that is quality, that the client likes, and you work nine to five, you're gonna make more than the barber who takes an hour but charges at the same price just because you're doing it more frequently. You know what I'm saying? That That's why I tie in that your haircuts don't matter because if you're so focused on the quality that you're taking forever, you're not gonna make the same amount of money and the client would have been happy with what it looked like 20 minutes ago. You know what I'm saying? So it's a balance of understanding that you wanna get better while at the same time that you're running a business um, and what you do for money, right? And I, the, like I said, the mentality of it's not all about the money really held me back because I was so focused on the haircuts. I was taking so long that I wasn't making the money that I should have been. And I got a lot of leeway because, again, I started at 18 years old, but I see a lot of older barbers do it as well. So your goal as a new barber is to get as good as you can, yes, but I would really focus on your time and your time management. Make sure that you're on time for your clients, right? Make sure you're doing the haircuts in an efficient manner and they're sitting in the chair at the time of their appointment. You're not going to be perfect. You're not, but try your best. And this goes into my next point. Your service matters just as much as the haircut, right? Because along with me taking so long in a haircut, I also didn't talk very much, you know? So I wasn't servicing my client as well as I could have, right? The entire experience is what makes a haircut worth the money that it cost, right? I can give you a fire haircut, right? But if I treat you like trash, I'm late to your appointment every single time. I have no communication with you, not even a hi or a bye. Um, the haircut value just goes down. You know what I'm saying? So I, I challenge you to look at the entirety of your service from the moment that they walk in, what does it smell like? The moment that they sit down, does your cape smell like it's been on a hundred other people before them? You know, you want to make sure your cape smells good. Um, are you greeting them? Are you saying hi? Do you have a smile on your face? You know, basic customer service stuff. Yes, the barber industry is much more chill. We have a much more personal relationship with our client but at the end of the day that's our customer right that person if they come every two weeks and they're paying you forty dollars they're giving you you know anywhere from a thousand to two thousand every single year just off one client look at them like that look at them at, don't challenge don't look at i challenge you to not look at them as just a thirty dollar haircut a forty dollar haircut look at this person as someone who gives you anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars a year to make them look good and treat them like that if someone was to come up to you right now and hand you $2,000, I bet you you're going to be super nice to them. You know what I'm saying? Your clients are doing that. But the problem is we're looking at clients as a one-time exchange without understanding that this client comes on a regular basis. At least most people do, right? And, and, and I, I, it's important to treat them like that. Don't treat them like trash. So make sure it smells good. Make sure the cape smells good. Make sure you greet them. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that when they leave, they have hair off of their face, off of their neck as much as possible. Look at the entirety of your service. They sat down at the time of their appointment. They're leaving an efficient matter. All that matters. It's not just how your haircut looks. I can't stress that enough. And another part of your service is where it's taking place, right? What barbershop are you in? Where are you cutting? Are you cutting in a studio? Are you cutting in a barbershop? Right, which I suggest if you're a new barber, piece of advice as well, Go to a barbershop, right? The goal as a new barber is to limit the amount of time it takes to get you from point A to point B, right? From not knowing nothing to knowing something, you know what I'm saying? And I believe if you go from barber school to a suite, which you're by yourself in a suite, every, all the business that comes into that place is dependent upon you and no one else. You just get, you're get, making it harder to get from that point A to point B, right? So it's all about joining the right ship and joining the right barbershop. You know, for me, I was fortunate. I joined a barbershop who had an owner um, that helped me a lot, right? He had already opened up two shops in his career. He was very successful, very booked, a really good barber, and had a great person to learn from. You know, so if you're a new barber, I challenge you to look for a barbershop who the leader of that barbershop, the manager, the owner, whoever is in charge, is in a place that you would like to be, 
right? You always want to learn from people that are in a place that you would like to be as well. I'm not going to take marriage advice for someone who can't keep a marriage together. You know, I'm not going to take financial advice from someone who has no money. You know what I'm saying? There's no fruit that is attached to what they do. So join a barbershop where, you know, you feel like you fit the culture. You could tell that it's walk-in city, right? They're having a lot of clients that come in. And yeah, you just want to make sure that you're in the right ship to be in the best position possible to be successful. That's what it's all about is getting in position. You know, when you put yourself in a position to be blessed, you will be blessed. You know what I'm saying? So put yourself in the right position, in the right barbershop, in the right environment to cultivate that success that you desire as a brand new barber. And as a brand new barber, you know, you're ambitious. When you start anything, you have a fire inside you to grow, to be the best that you possibly can. And that fire is amazing and it's beautiful and you want to keep that burning as long as possible. So my advice to you, new barber, as well, is to be careful who you take advice from. Unfortunately, just like any other industry, barbering has a lot of bitter people in it. People who've been doing it for 30 plus years, 20 plus years, and are miserable because they didn't run their business well. You know, they just have bad taste in their mouth from experiences that happened in their career. And a lot of times when you ask them for advice, they'll give you the wrong advice. Especially nowadays, barbering now, compared to barbering what it was, you know, 20 plus years ago, is different, right? The amount of money you can make is different. The opportunities that come from it is different. So granted, older barbers are gonna look at what new barbers are able to do, especially if you come in hot like I was, right? Example, example time. When I went to my first barbershop, beautiful barbershop, it was nice, but that was it. It was just a nice barbershop. I went in there, right, as a brand new barber out of school, because um, mind you, I'd already been cutting for a little bit. So I went in there with a decent amount of clientele. I came in with my ring light, as you can see. I came in with my airbrush for enhancements. I came in with a cool, you know, illusion smock. And I just kind of sauced it up a little bit. No, no, didn't think anything of it. I just continued to do what I've already been doing, right? But when I came into the barbershop, no one had that. So they were like, oh, some of them were like, oh, this is, this is cool. Um, and a month later, a barber got a ring light. Another month later, a barber bought an air compressor. And soon enough, everybody in there had an air compressor, a ring light, a smock, was up to the standards of what the new barber era was. But with that came envy from barbers who had been doing it longer than me. You know, so expect that. Expect that. We're in a better position as new barbers to be successful, and we can do it quicker than barbers from before. So all that to say, be careful who you take advice from. Um, because not always, not everybody has the best intentions for you. So you want to make sure, like I said, you take advice from people that are in places that you would like to be. Right? Don't take advice from the barber who is sitting in the chair all day on his phone with no clients. Take advice from the barber who is successful. Right? Who has a lot of clients. You see him cutting all day. You can tell that him and his clients are vibing. They're smiling. They're talking every single time. You know? Take advice from that person. So listen to me. Brand new barber. All right, this is what I need you to do. I need you to figure out what type of barber you want to be, right? Because honestly, there is. There's a lot of different types of barbers that you could be, you know? Um, do you want to be the content creator barber, right? Do you want to make content um, and, and, and build a brand around that as well as do barbering? Do you just want to be the barber behind the chair um, that cuts all day and makes money and leaves? Do you want to be a barber who opens up a barber shop? Do you want to be the trash barber? You know what I'm saying? All that to say, figure out what type of barber you want to be and take the steps necessary to get you there. For me, when I first started cutting hair, I knew I loved to make content. I was making content before I even did barbering, right? If there were school projects in high school that required, um, you could either do a video or, or like a written assignment. I was doing a video attached to that instead. I really liked it. So when I started barbering, I just continued to make videos. I continued to make content. And I knew that I learned off YouTube and that was the exact way um, that I wanted to help other people, right? So I always knew I wanted to be a successful barber. I wanted to be booked. I wanted to be really good, but I also wanted to make content. And a lot of times there was moments where I prioritized my content more than my barbering. Sometimes was it the best decision at the beginning? No, but now it has paid off. You know, it's really paid off actually. It's how you guys know me. You know what I'm saying? So figure out, do you want 
to make content? Do you want to make videos? Do you want to build a brand? Do you want to build a following to give yourself more opportunity? Or is your goal to like post occasionally like a normal person would and be completely booked and make a lot of money, which is totally fine. I don't want you to think that as a barber, there is this one way to success because it's not true. Right. There's barbers who or people who get into the barber industry just to build up enough capital to go and open up that business that they've always dreamed of that has nothing to do with barbering. There's barbers who just love to be barbers and want to be barbers to the day they die. Um, there's barbers that love to make content like me and understand that there's a lot more money and opportunity to be made um, by putting a camera in front of what you do every single day, you know, or like I said, you could be the trash barber that makes excuses why they're not booked. You know, that is a Debbie Downer to the entire shop that no one likes to be around, you know. So just figure that out. Figure out what type of barber you want to be and put yourself in a position to be that barber. Because it's true, man. People complain about not being where they want to be in life. Um, but they're also not taking the steps to get there. Like I said, it's all about putting yourself position in the, in the position, making sure you're in that room. You're shaking those hands. You're speaking to those people. You're making those connections, especially in the clientele building process, right? I'm an introvert. I'm, sh I'm shy. I was at least. I'm still one, but I broke out of it a lot as I get older. I mean, it's really hard for me to introduce myself and tell people what I do and, and try to get them to sit in my chair. But you know what? Some things just have to get done despite how you feel. Everybody wants this magic way to achieve certain things. But the thing is... If it's not broke, don't fix it. There's no need to reinvent the wheel if it works. Like, word of mouth works. Doing the practical things to get book works. You know? You have to get over your insecurities. You have to get over what you don't want to do. And as cliche and as simple as it sounds, you have to just do it. Right? Cliches are cliches for a reason. It's because they work. You don't have to listen to the guru. You don't have to listen to this dude that's clickbaiting you and trying to give you this new way to make... Hundreds of millions of dollars. Listen, there's a blueprint. There's a map. Follow that. All right? Follow that. And put yourself in position. Get into that room. Meet that person. Ask that client to sit in your chair. Because it's exciting. Right? As a new barber, when you see the opportunities that could be, it's beautiful. It's awesome. It's, a, it's just like, let's go. You know what I'm saying? I remember that feeling. There's still moments I wake up every day and I'm like, let's go. Right? Because I love this industry. Um... So you're in a great position. You're in a great position. Um, and I hope this video helped you in some way, shape, or form. And if you guys want to learn how to do haircuts at an entirely new level, um, as well as learn how to make extra money with social media, be sure to watch the uh, videos at the end of this. Um, but like always, I appreciate you guys, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.